Hello everyone, my name is Sergei Maschenko. I'm from Sharknet, also Compute Canada. Today, I will be talking about how to run serial farms on our newest cluster, Graham. And here's the picture of the cluster. Here's the outline. I will start with a short introduction. And then I will go over a few examples of serial farming scripts starting from a simple for loop method to automate job submission for serial farms and ending with fully featured package meta. All the examples here, by the way, I prepared specifically for this presentation. If time permits, I will show a live demonstration of some of these packages and I will end with conclusions. So let's start with the introduction. What is serial farming? In this not so scientific definition, farming is running a large number of cluster jobs, which are effectively independent of each other, but are solving different aspects of the same problem. And this can be easily expanded to include uh, parallel farming, like MPI, GPU, multi-threaded farming. The independence bit is critical. It means that jobs in a serial farm can run in any order concurrently or sequentially. This is very important when it comes to scheduling of serial farms. There are many different situations in research when serial farming is the proper tool to use. Here's just one example. A Monte Carlo type of simulation can be used to find, for example, a global minima in a multidimensional parameter space. As you can see in this plot, each red dot can correspond to a separate serial farm job, which all together used to find a global minimum of certain problem. What are the advantages of this tool of zero farming approach? The most important one is the fact that zero farming is in fact a perfectly scalable parallel problem. Sometimes these problems are called embarrassingly parallel, but I prefer to call perfectly parallel. This uh, comes from the fact that there are no parallel overheads in serial farms. For example, if you need to run 10 times more cases in a serial farm, you can do that by just spending 10 times more CPU hours. This is not going to be the case with real MPI a parallel application. You will definitely need to spend more than 10 times of resources. The fact that serial farm jobs are both independent and also typically use a fairly small amount of resources. For example, they're typically serial using only a single CPU core and runtime is typically fairly short, makes these jobs very scheduler friendly. There is a caveat though, I will discuss that later. Another advantage with serial farms, it's usually very easy and simple to downscale or upscale the size of the problem you're solving which is normally the case with a true parallel application. So you don't have to worry about scalability issues and so on. You just, if you need to increase it by factor of 10, you just change one parameter. And often that's all we need to do. Of course, when there are advantages, there are always caveats. I will show you the two slides of challenges of zero farming, but all these challenges of technical nature, they're all fixable. And in fact, the examples of scripts I'll show today are do exactly that. They're going to address all of these issues. The most obvious challenge is the automation step. Basically, it is not practical to do any serial farming without some basic scripting. At the very least, you want to automate job submission. Again, it's fixable. It's not a problem. Second challenge, for specific cases when your individual jobs are short and short in a cluster context, means something less than 20 minutes of runtime. Such short jobs happen to be very inefficient. They have significant scheduler overheads. It takes some time between maybe half a minute, a minute, or maybe longer to run a job on a scheduler. It takes time to register the job you just submitted, to allocate it, to start the shell, to start the environment, and then do the cleanup after the job is over. That means with short jobs, you'll be spending many more CPU cycles than what is actually needed. They become very inefficient. 
bad for the cluster, bad for you also. But there is a solution. One has to bundle up individual jobs into bigger meta jobs. This, by the way, also helps to bypass the limit on the number of jobs. Some of you might not be aware there is a limit, uh, 5,000 on gram. So one cannot submit more than 5,000 jobs. And the reason for that limit is specifically to avoid people submitting too many super short jobs, which will be very wasteful and very decremental for the cluster performance. Next challenge is sometimes when you have short jobs and use simple static workload balancing when you do bundling up, as my first few examples will demonstrate, they will be using a simple static method that can become a quite poor performance. So if there is a wide range in run times of your individual cases or jobs, a superior method would be to use a dynamic workload balancing. And that method is being used in my final package method I will show you at the end. So it is, again, a challenge which can be fixed. The next point, once you start running more than a few dozens or hundreds of serial farming jobs, it might become a challenge to track down the code performance. Sometimes some of the jobs fail. It's either your fault, maybe wrong parameter, code bug, or it could be hardware issue. There is really a need to automate the analysis of exit codes of all your serial farming jobs. And again, this is a technical issue and this can be solved as I will show you later. Finally, Sometimes you want to run more than one farm concurrently if you don't use any special tools that can be very messy and fail prone. My meta package handles that just fine, as you will see later. So let's go through these examples of uh, scripting. First, let me describe the common setup. Just to agree on the slang I'm using, each instance of a serial farm computation I call a case. This is important to differentiate it from a job. In simplest situation, there will be one case per job. But once you start bundling up short cases into larger meta jobs, you want to differentiate these two things. There are multiple ways one can describe workload for the serial farm. I'm using just one, which works just fine. All the workload is described in a single text file where each line of the file is a literal list of commands to be executed for, by separate jobs. For example, the line can be full path to your code followed by command line arguments. Could be a code with some redirect. Or it can be more than one command separated by semicolons. But it's important if you do that, make sure the code execution is the very last command on your line. This is critical when you try to capture the exit status of your code execution, as I will show you later. One can use all kinds of scripting languages to automate serial farming processing. For example, the popular Python can be used here. I chose to write all my scripts using bash scripting in part because of the convenience, the fact that Slurm, which is the Graham scheduler, uses Bash internally in JavaScript. So it kind of makes it natural to just continue using Bash scripting. But it's perfectly fine to mix scripting. You can write higher level scripts in Python or other scripting language and write the JavaScript in Bash. All the examples I'll be talking about are available to any Graham user. You just have to log into Graham and copy the whole set using the command I list here. All right, let's start with the first and the simplest example. A simple for loop approach to automating job submission in serial farms. This is how we can test this example. After you copy my files, you cd to this subdirectory for loop, and you run this script for loop.sh you will see a number of lines, each line per the job submitted. So this method uses the simplest one case per job mode, meaning it's, it should be used only with fairly long uh, jobs, longer than 20 minutes. There is no bundling up feature here. 
at the end when the farm finished running you can see the result by executing this command cat asterisk dot out as you can see from the output the serial farm i'm using for my testing is a, a dumb one it's just a bunch of sleep commands with some very small numbers so some of these jobs sleep four seconds 27 seconds and so on this is just for the testing purposes let's have a look at the job submission script for loop there are a few features which will be used throughout this presentation so pay attention here what i'm doing here i'm exporting a variable table and i'm assigning a value table dot dot so table dot dot it's a name i use for serial farm description it's going to be always the same name why do i need to export it one way to pass arguments to the job script in slurm is by creating an environment variable and assigning a value to it by fact that i am doing export table equal table that means that the table variable will be also available on the shelf or which will be launched from this shell including the job script shell on the next line i'm using wc command to figure out how many lines are in the table dot dot file and that tells me how many cases i need to process in this simplest uh, scenario there will be one case per job so that also tells me how many jobs i'm going to submit finally the essence of this uh, script is the for loop what i'm doing here i'm going from i equal one to i equal number of cases and then i also export one more variable the current case id or case number i export it as variable i4 and then finally i use the slurm command as batch job script sh so at the end and cases jobs will be submitted after you run this script let's have a look at the job script sh file this is the file you want to modify to customize with specific as batch arguments for example you might want to change runtime which is dash t or dash dash time in this case it's only 10 minutes memory and at the very least you want to change the account all the examples here using my account you want to change it to your account otherwise it's not going to work and then there are three lines which will be used throughout these examples first i'm using sed linux command to extract specific case line from the table so as i just mentioned uh, I'm using uh, environment variables to pass arguments to the job script. So table is the table dot that, and I4 will have specific case ID value. So each job will extract specific line from this table dot that file and assign it to a line variable. Next, for convenience, I'm echoing both the case ID and the whole command I'm about to execute finally i'm executing the command using eval double quotes and the variable name this is the proper way to execute any bash commands contained in a variable uh, that handles all kind of situations semicolons redirection and so on so what have we learned from the first example first the convenient way to pass arguments to job script is to say export name of the new variable equal to whatever value you're trying to pass second the convenient way to extract specific line case corresponding line from a text file is use sed command as written here and third the proper way to execute sequence of bash commands stored in environment variable is by using eval and then double quotes variable name finally in the first a few simple examples i'll be showing you only the job submission automation is presented what if you need to kill all your serial farm uh, there is a trick if the serial farm is the only thing you're currently running on gram you can use s cancel dash u your username and that will kill all the jobs you currently uh, have on gram both queued and running so use it very carefully my full featured package meta i will be talking at the end has more advanced functionality here's the summary for the first example 
It's a very simple way to achieve automation at the job submission stage. And of course, all other desirable or important serial farming features are missing. Let's consider a second example, job arrays, or I call them as array job. This is how we can test it by changing to this directory and running the script job array.sh. You can see right away a difference from the previous case. Before you got multiple lines, multiple job IDs. Here we get only one. This job ID describes the whole job array. Job array is a feature of the Slurm scheduler. And I will show in the next slide how to use it. So the job submission script, job array.sh, it looks similar to the previous example, the same export table, the same end cases. The difference here is there is no for loop. Instead, we're using the array job feature of Slurm by providing dash dash array equal. And then we provide a range of case IDs we want to process. In our case, we just use one dash number of cases. And then job script on sh. Inside job script, it looks more or less the same as in our simple for loop example. The only important difference is usage of Slurm array task ID variable. This is the variable you have to use to customize your job script when you use job array feature of Slurm. I'm assigning value of this variable to local variable i and then use it as before, sed, echo, and eval. So what we learned here is one has to use Slurm array task ID variable, which is internal Slurm variable, in your job script to customize execution of your job array or serial farm jobs. Here's the summary. As you've seen, this is a slightly more elegant way to automate submission of serial farming jobs. Fewer lines of code in the script, and also you have the ability to easily kill just the job array by using S cancel and then job ID of the array job. But otherwise, you have to realize that there is no other advantages. You still have the same limit on the total number of jobs, which is 5,000 on gram. And you still have the problem. If your jobs are too short, you will have extremely inefficient serial farm. There is no bundling up involved in array jobs. So, and also all other important features of serial farming are still missing. Our third example introduces new feature. As the name suggests, in this example, we are bundling up a few cases to make a longer running meta jobs. And this is specifically very important if runtime of your individual jobs is less than 20 minutes. So here is how you test this example. You go to this directory, you run this script, bundle up to the stage, and then you can see it returns a few job IDs. The number of these jobs will be smaller than the total number of lines in your table dot dot, the total number of cases you want to process, because they will be bundled up. So we are running not one case per job, but meta jobs, each of which will handle multiple cases. This is how bundle up a dot sh file looks like. There is one new thing here. We introduce new parameter and bundle variable. This is the desired number of cases per meta job we want to run in our serial farm. Given the number of cases and n bundle, we can now estimate how many meta jobs we need to submit by doing integer divide n cases divide by n bundle. And that gives us number of jobs. As you probably noticed, we now export you not just the table variable, but a few other variables as well. Export n cases, n jobs, and then also inside the for loop, which now submits meta jobs. So it goes from i equal 1 to number of meta jobs. And we also export the current meta job ID as a variable i0. And then we do the usual as batch. Here's how job script.sh looks like. In addition to the usual as batch switches, which you need to customize, 
now we see there is a second for loop. This for loop will be executed sequentially by each of those meta jobs. Each of these meta jobs will process multiple cases, one at a time, sequentially. And here's the trick. It's used quite often in parallel programming. To achieve the best possible static workload distribution between, let's say, n parallel jobs, and you need to process n cases between all of these jobs, the trick is you start with your current job ID, you go over all the cases you need to process with a stride or step equal to number of jobs. What happens in the worst case scenario, the difference between number of cases processed by different jobs will be at most one. So if you need the best possible static workload balance you know, distribution between parallel threads or jobs, this is a very useful uh, trick to use. But inside, we execute in the usual SCD, echo, and eval commands sequentially. What we've learned here. First, one has to give a thought with what value of n bundle to choose. You want to aim to total runtime of your meta job for at least 20 minutes. But actually, even better if it's one hour or three hours or maybe all the way up to 12 hours. In terms of scheduling, there is no disadvantage of having runtime up to 12 hours, but it will minimize the scheduler overheads. But please don't forget to modify the sbatch-t argument accordingly, because now it's no longer an individual case runtime. It's the runtime for the whole meta job. So it's more or less individual case runtime times n bundle. That's what should be the argument here. Another thing you learned here or noticed in Slurm, job scripts are just plain bash scripts. So one can use all kind of bash commands inside, for example, for loops inside your job script. And the final tip, the convenient way to achieve nice static workload balancing is, as I described before, using the for loop. Here's the summary of this example. First of all, a comment, which applicable to all examples. Uh, be careful a bad table dot dot file or bad parameters can result in a huge number of jobs submitted. So you have to monitor job submission stage to make sure it doesn't happen. This is the example where we introduce new feature, the bundling up feature, which is great if your individual job runtime is less than 20 minutes. If it's even shorter than that, shorter than five minutes, the throughput can dramatically improve if you start bundling up. And Obviously, now we can bypass the 5,000 job limit. Here's the fourth example. It's a little bit a sidestep, so there are no new features introduced here. We still do an automatic submission of jobs and bundling up. And the twist here, sometimes you might find it useful to run your whole serial farm using 32 CPU cores on a whole gram node. I'll tell you later when it can be advantageous. This is how you test these scripts by running whole node.sh script. And you can see here, similar to array job approach, only single job ID is returned. And the reason for that is we are asking allocation for a full gram node. So there will be a single job ID corresponding to your whole farm. The script to submit jobs looks very simple. You just export a table value and then run as batch job script. The job script looks like this. Here is important point. When you share the whole node, it makes total sense to use so-called by node way to allocate jobs or by node partition. By default on Gram, if you just ask for number of CPU cores, let's say 32, number of nodes one, most likely you'll be using by core, the default allocation. And size of that partition is smaller. Usually it takes less time, less queuing time to start running a whole node job, which is using by node allocation. To ensure your job is using by node allocation, you have to provide these two switches, dash dash nodes is equal one in our case, 
And then this is important bit, dash dash task per node is equal 32. And these two switches ensures you're using by node partition. Then inside the job, we're figuring out number of cases, as before, just counting lines in the table dot dot file. The number of threads, which will be 32, this is number of CPU cores in a whole node, we are reading from internal Slurm variables, Slurm task per node, but this is basically this number. To avoid using it twice, I'm using this trick here. Once we have the full node, we can submit 32 separate threads. Each of these threads would be processing multiple cases using the bundling up feature. So this is how it's arranged. We have a for loop where index i goes from one to the number of threads, which is 32. Inside, we are running yet another script, single thread.sh, and we are passing some of the arguments through command line arguments, uh, the case ID or thread ID, rather, number of cases, and number of threads, which is 32. It is important that we are redirecting the output from each thread to a separate file. Otherwise, the output from all 32 threads would be mangled. Very important, we put this process in the background by using the ampersand at the end. If we didn't put that, that this for loop would just execute one at a time sequentially. With the ampersand, this loop will submit all 32 threads to the background, and then job will finish instantly unless we put wait bash command at the end. So don't forget to put wait at the end of your job script. And this is the third script we have to use, single thread.sh. We receive three important parameters through command line arguments, thread ID and cases and thread. And now we have this second for loop, which takes care of multiple cases per thread. And we use the, the usual trick to achieve nice static workload balancing. We start with a thread with i equal thread ID. We go over all the n cases and go with the stride of number of threads inside the usual sed, echo, and eval commands. What we've learned here is that if you want to run multiple serial processes on a whole gram node, first probably you want to request a by node partition by using dash dash node equal n and task per node equal 32. You have to send all the process to the background with ampersand and don't forget to add wait at the end of the job screen. Here's the summary of this example. You would want to use this approach, for example, if all you need is 32 CPU cores for a serial farm, if it's sufficient. And then the advantage is a by node allocation is usually faster than by core. So you just see your jobs running sooner. A second, uh, you might also want to share some other resource of the whole node. For example, each uh, gram node has a fast SSD drive, uh, probably one or two terabyte, mounted as slash TMP. If you want your jobs to share that hard drive, this is the way to go. Otherwise, you probably shouldn't be using this method as it's quite inflexible. Only 32 CPU cores can, be, can participate in a farm. With the fifth example, we introduce another new feature. Now we'll be capturing the exit status of each case to enable further analysis and processing to figure out which jobs failed. Here's how you test the example. This is the script you should run. And let's have a look at submit status.sh script. You probably notice that it looks almost exactly the same as bundling up my example number three. So the only difference there is extra line here, I'm removing status dot ampersand. And the reason for that, once you run this script, and the job start running, they will start storing the exit status of individual cases into status files, one file per meta job. And you want to delete these files before you start a new farm. The rest looks exactly like our bundling up example. Inside the job script.sh file, we see the usual for loop achieving nice static workload balancing the usual sed echo and eval command. But the new stuff here is we are reading the value of the special bash variable dollar sign question mark. 
This variable has the value of the exit status of the previous bash command. That's why it was critical, I told you before. On each line of your table.dot file, you want to make sure that the actual code execution is the very last on that line, if you're using semicolon, more than one command. That ensures that here we can capture the exit status of your code. And what is the exit status? If it's zero, then it's probably OK. If it's not zero, there was some problem. So it failed. And then we store in both the case ID and the exit status into meta job specific uh, status file. Here are some tips. To figure out the exit status of the previous command in bash, you just read the dollar sign question mark variable. Another tip is, unfortunately, many research codes don't properly handle the exit status. Quite often they fail with exit status zero, which would suggest it's a good execution, but in fact there was a problem. In these cases, one has to add more intelligence to the job script uh, command. For example, if you know that your code runs fine if at the end it generates a non-zero size file of the name, let's say, output.dat, then you can insert this if statement after the status line. And this if basically checks if non-zero size output.dat file doesn't exist, then we say status equal one, and that means this job failed. So modify this accordingly to your specific situation. Here's the summary of this approach. We added new feature. Now we can capture exit status of all the cases in our serial form. This should simplify the task of identified failed cases, but I'm not providing here any means to do that. That will be accomplished in the next and final example, the full feature package and I call meta. So here's the final example for today, meta package. It has multiple commands or scripts. So the convenient way to use it is to create in your home directory, subdirectory bin, if it doesn't exist, and then move all the scripts you find in this six underscore meta slash bin folder to your bin subdirectory and make sure it is on your path variable. Then you go inside the six underscore meta farming or example directory, and there you will see three files you need to customize. The usual table dot dot, also job script dot sh, and single case run, which you might or might not need to customize. I will show you now more specifics. So overview of this package, this is a full feature serial farming package, which covers all the essential needs of serial farming. It automates farm submission, but also query, killing, analysis, and resubmission of cases which failed or never ran. It supports both one case per job or bundling up modes of operation. In the latter case, it's using the more advantages dynamic workload balancing. In all my prior example, I use simplest static workload balancing. Dynamic method is superior when cases run times vary a lot. With this approach, with this script, one can run any number of independent farms concurrently. I will show you how. It also has some advanced features, mostly about robustness. I don't have time discussing. Here's the full list of meta commands you need to know. Starting with submit.run, it has one obligatory argument, which is either minus one, and in that case, you're using simple one case per job, which is applicable to longer jobs, longer than 20 minutes runtime. If n is positive integer, then you are using the uh, multiple cases per job using dynamic workload balancing uh, method. And n value is basically the number of meta jobs you want to run. Next command is query.run prints a one-line summary of the farm state, a number of queued jobs, running jobs, and done jobs. List.run will list all the queued and running jobs of this particular farm. QRUN will kill this farm. Sometimes you might want to use prune.run, kills only the queued jobs of this farm. It doesn't touch the running job. 
the status.run command with a capital S list exit statuses one line per case. You run this command once some jobs or all jobs were already uh, already ran. Uh, by default, it is sorted by the case ID, but if you use switch dash F, it will place all failed cases with non-zero exit status at the bottom. This makes it much easier to detect failed cases. A very powerful new command is resubmit, and it takes the same argument N as submit. After you run your farm, you run this command, and then it finds all the cases which either failed or never ran and then submits them as a new form using the n parameter the same way as n parameter here. Finally, if you want to re return the state of your farming directory to the original state, you use clean.run. It deletes all the files and subdirectories created in your farm directory except for the original files table.dot, jobscript.sh, and single case run. Here's the jobscript.sh file. You have to customize this file to change, modify as batch switches. At the very least, you need to change the account name because it's using my account name. Uh, don't change the line here, task.run. There is also a script single case.run. You don't have to change it. It will work in many cases as is. And if you change it only in this part, which is a uh, user customizable part, this script uses slightly more general way to run serial farming jobs. In all prior examples, all, all executions of my code were done inside the serial farming directory. So if these files produce the same file names, it's going to be messed up. Here we use more robust approach. We always create a directory run and then case ID. Then we go inside that subdirectory, and only there we execute the command or commands for this case. And we store all the output in the local file out.log, and we also capture the exit state. In this way, all cases will be running in a separate subdirectory, which should be helpful in, in many cases. If you want to do any changes to this, this is the place where you want to do that. Here are some more details. As promised, uh, as I explained before, uh, with Meta Package, you can run multiple concurrent farms. To achieve that, you have to copy the six underscore Meta directory under a new name with a new table dot dot, but with the same job script and single case run files. And then you can go inside one of these directories, and then you can use commands submit, kill, clean, and so on and you will be operating that specific farm. So there will be no interference with any other farms you might be running. Important comment here, inside the jobscript.sh file, there is only one obligatory as batch switch which you have to provide. This is dash t or dash dash time, the runtime of the meta job. The value for this runtime is used internally by the script, so that's why you have to provide it there. All the rest of as batch switches can be either added to that file, or you can provide them as additional as batch arguments at the end of the submit or resubmit run command. So there are two ways to provide as batch switches, except for dash T1. Now, before we go to conclusions, I have time to do a short live demonstration. So let me switch to my terminal. So I just logged into Gram Cluster. I'm going to CD serial farming. And let's try the very first, the simplest example. You can see some older files generated when I ran it before. But here's the script you want to use to submit jobs. And by the way, let me show first the content of my table that, as I told you before, these are just dumb jobs, sleep jobs, and they're very short jobs, by the way. So a case like this would be very inefficient for one case per job scenario, but I do it just as a test here. So there are four lines in this table, and this script should submit four jobs in a serial form.
There are no more means of automation available here. We can use the standard S Q dash U my username to see what's happening to these uh, jobs. They're still all queued, so as usual, Gram is busy. So most likely we won't see any of my examples actually running. And as I explained before, if the farm is the only thing you're running on a cluster, you can use S cancel dash U your username to kill all your jobs on Gram. This is the way, one way you can kill your farm. But use it carefully because it kills everything, including any other jobs you were running before. So now the list is empty. So let now go to, let's try the number five case, the exit status. You can see output from the previous job. So let me actually show you how the output looks like before I run the script. So you can say cat status. Each of these meta job returns a few cases. Let's say status dot one. So you can see that my meta job with the ID one sequentially executed multiple cases with the following case IDs in exit status was zero everywhere. So uh, it looks good. And in this example, the table dot is a large is a large uh, file. There are 100 different cases. So let, let's submit all those. So there are 100 cases, but I know they're very short, just a few seconds length each. So I'm using a bundling up approach, uh, which means that I'm only submitting six meta jobs. Each of those meta jobs will execute on average 15 or maybe slightly more of cases sequentially. So the cluster is very busy that I can even tell, even job submission is quite slow. But just in case, let's have a look if anything is running. Everything is still queued. I'm going to leave it as is. And let's switch to my final example, the meta package. There are a bunch of things which were created last time I ran the job or the farm. Let me just demonstrate because I'm not sure it will actually run today because the cluster is busy. I can use status.run to list the output of all the cases. Uh, especially the exit status. So the case ID and then exit status. And then you can see there is one failed job with the case ID is eight. To make it more clear, you can use dash F and it's listed at the very bottom. So case ID eight is problematic. Go into table dot dot. By the way, you will see here the case IDs are prepended on each line of the table. You don't have to do it by hand. First time you run the serial farm, it will do it for you and it will keep it that way. So now it's very easy to see case number eight failed. And the reason for that, I, I made a typo. Instead of sleep, I said slap. So what I should do now, I should fix it, save the file. And now I can resubmit my uh, farm, but only to process things which either failed or never ran. I can use either dash minus one, which means one case per job, or I can say any number of meta jobs I want to run. Let's say four. The fact it, the, that it only has to process one single case will be taken care of automatically. So at the end, it only submits one single job. I can use query command to see one line summary of my current form. There are zero running jobs, one queue jobs, and zero done job. The fact that I'm running or rather submitted some other jobs, they don't interfere. Here you see the full list of jobs I submitted recently, including the serial farm here. 
but using query command you you just abstract from anything else you're doing you just you can see only the zero farm status you can use also list command to have a list of all the jobs they're still queued if you want you can say kill dot run it will kill only the jobs belonging to the current farm okay so let's in fact do that and now if you say query it actually complains but at the end it says one cases where not processor failed so it still remembers one case failed and we just killed the job which was submitted to run again that failed case and now we do clean dot run we want to bring to the original state erase all the files and subdirectors which were created here when I ran it before I say yes so now we have to the back to the original state only the table dot dot single case run and job script dot state and there are there are 18 cases to solve and we use command submit dot run if you say minus one it will submit 18 jobs each of which will process a single case but as you can see here the typical runtime is around 30 seconds it's super short very inefficient so one in fact has to use bundling up feature so I want to solve all of my 18 cases using two meta jobs that's what my scripts do they submit the jobs now we can say query there are zero running too cute zero done jobs list will list all of these jobs they're still cute once they start running it produces some status outputs we can use the status command to see but right now there are no files created yet and also once they start running you will see multiple run subdirectors and the code will be executed inside each of these run subdirectors I think that's all I wanted to cover today I'm switching back to conclusions so zero farming can be messy time-consuming and error-prone if you don't use proper tools what I presented today a few different examples of farming scripts starting from the very simple for loop example and ending with the all featured matter package and the examples I'm providing to you and also the tips in this webinar should help you to become a better serial farmer without spending too much time and effort if you have any questions please email me directly at sym at sharknet.ca or you can always send an email to help at sharknet.ca that concludes my presentation thank you very much for your attention